you pull out your wallet and look at those plastic cards we use every day. They all look pretty similar. But what if I told you that one of these cards represents one of the most ambitious technological revolutions you've never heard of? Everyone knows what a rupee credit card looks like. Almost nobody knows the real story behind it. This yojana is the Gaon Garib Tak. Rupee? Rupee? Rupee card, Rupee. How did a team of Indian innovators build something that would eventually process more transactions than Visa? Put the card in, uh, swipe it down. Let's dive into the hidden tale of Rupee. At a conference in Mumbai in 2009, A.P. Hota, a seasoned banker with over three decades of experience, stood before a room of sceptical executives. He was about to propose something that seemed almost impossible, creating India's own payment network to challenge the global giants Visa and MasterCard. How many of you know that every time these cards are used, India pays a fee to foreign companies? To fully understand how Rupee started, we have to go back to India in 2008. The country was riding high on its IT revolution. Indian engineers were helping build payment systems for companies around the world. I, I think the best product of India is its programmers. The irony? India's own payment infrastructure was entirely dependent on foreign networks. 557 million Indians had no access to formal banking. Over 1.2 billion in annual fees were owing to foreign payment networks. Works. Even basic financial services were out of reach for most Indians. In a small conference room at the NPCI headquarters in Mumbai, something remarkable was happening. Long after regular office hours, a small group would gather. They called themselves the Midnight Club. M. Balakrishnan, fresh from IIT Delhi, would bring his laptop filled with payment system diagrams. AP Hotha would arrive with the stacks of regulatory documents. N. Rajendran, a banker turned technologist, would sketch out his vision for unified payments on whiteboards. They were trying to solve a uniquely Indian problem. How do you create a payment system for a country where many people have never used a bank? Internet connectivity is spotty at best, and it all needs to work in 22 different languages. One night in that conference room, Bal Krishnan drew something on the whiteboard that made everyone stop and stare. It looked more like a web with dozens of interconnected nodes. To understand why this was revolutionary, we need to look at how traditional payment networks were built. Visa and MasterCard had developed their systems in the 1970s, using a hierarchical structure where all transactions needed to flow through central processing hubs. It was like a massive highway system where all roads eventually led to a few major cities. This made sense in America and Europe, but India needed something more like a local street network, where traffic could find multiple paths to its destination. Bhavesh Maheshwari, a security expert on the team, had been studying how Indian railways handled offline ticketing. This led to a radical innovation, a hybrid online-offline security protocol that would become Rupee's secret weapon. The team developed adaptive authorization protocols that worked with spotty connectivity, multi-model authentication systems that worked in multiple languages, fault-tolerant transaction processing that could handle massive scale. But the most revolutionary aspect was the cost structure. Let's break down what happens when you swipe your card. With Visa or MasterCard, transaction data travels to global processing centers, gets processed through multiple international hops, returns with authorization costs between 2 to 3 percent in merchant discount rate. But with Rupee, transaction stays within India, processes through a distributed network, uses local data centers, costs just 0.9 percent MDR for debit cards and zero MDR for transactions below 2000. Enter Prime Minister Narendra Modi and the Jan Dhan Yojana. But here's what most people don't know. Months before the program was announced, late night meetings were happening between the Rupee team and the government officials. 300 million new accounts to be opened, 300 million Rupee cards to be issued, a network that needed to scale 100x virtually overnight. We were initiated by IBA and promoted by 10 leading banks of this country. This is where all those late night design decisions paid off. The distributed the fault tolerant processing, the offline capabilities, suddenly everything made sense. Rupee wasn't just ready for scale, it had been built for it from day one. By 2017, Rupee had surpassed Visa in India's domestic market. 
But Dilip Azbe, who now led NPCI, believed Rupay was just beginning to scratch the surface of its potential. In 2022, they fully integrated their card network with UPI. They said card networks and real-time payments were fundamentally different systems that couldn't be merged. We decided to prove them wrong. The integration transformed every smartphone into a potential point of sale. Every QR code into a credit card terminal. Small merchants who had never accepted card payments were suddenly processing digital credit transactions through their phones. The traditional playbook for international expansion followed religiously by Visa and MasterCard called for premium cards and high fees. But Rupee had learned sometimes the biggest opportunities lie in serving those that others ignore. And then, in 2024, the president of the UAE was inaugurating a new era in cross-border payments. By February 2024, Rupee had achieved acceptance in seven countries. Today, Rupee is pushing boundaries that traditional networks haven't ever approached. Voice-based payments in regional languages, AI-powered fraud detection, but perhaps the the most remarkable thing isn't in the technology, it is in the stories. The vegetable vendor who opened his first bank account with a rupee card and now accepts UPI payments. The small town entrepreneur who could suddenly access credit through her smartphone. These are the real measures of rupee success. The next time you see someone pull out a rupee card, remember, you're not just looking at a piece of plastic, you're looking at a testament to what happens when technological ambition meets social purpose and when a country decides to chart its own course in the digital age. It's proof that the future of financial technology doesn't have to be written in Silicon Valley or London. Sometimes it can be written in the midnight meetings of dreamers in Mumbai. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey of the Rupee credit card. This is your host Rinosh and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.